What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Cracker Crumbs update. Yay. I'm going to make this a point one, just like what Marvel does. <laughs> Lots of fun. Uh, I had gotten a couple of questions, uh, and I figured it's just easier to answer them on a video. I know I just put up an update, but what the hell. Uh, and just, uh, some of the questions were asking to show some stuff off, so makes sense. Um, one question I got from my friend, he's like, oh, you know, what do you think of the new uh, The Walking Dead, the mid-season finale or whatever? And why do they have mid-season finales? Oh, man. Um, I'm going to try not to give any spoilers away, but I might, so you might want to skip ahead a little bit. Um, the Walking Dead, I, I love the show. Uh, the mid-season thing was, was pretty interesting. Um, the one thing I don't like about it, which has nothing to do with the show, which is the fact that after the show, when they show you the preview of like what's going to come around, you know, coming up on the next you know episode in February or whatever it is, um, it pisses me off because you're kind of you want to see what's going to happen, but uh, like at the end you see like let's see, you might want to skip ahead a little bit. Daryl and Merle are kind of together, and the I guess they're getting ready to kill them. And yet on the preview, then they show Daryl running through the woods. You know, he's perfectly fine. So it's like you just screwed up. You know, you bastards. Um, yeah, but on that, I mean, I thought it was pretty cool. And why do they have mid-season finales? Um, the way I see it, I, I really, I don't know why they, why they have it. I know what you, obviously it's because of the holidays. That's the only thing I can think of is that they want you to go out and buy shit. Um, so they, you know, they, they put everything on, you know, on hold so you can concentrate on going out and spending money. It's the only thing I can really think of. Um, another thing I'm, I'm just kind of excited about that I've gotten a question, uh, the Mortal Kombat Legacy that's on Machinima, I, be, I believe it is. Um, the first season that they had, it was all like web episodes, which was really, really good. And that's the way they should have done Mortal Kombat. Like the movie, the original movie I, I loved, I thought it was great. The second one I thought sucked ass. Um, even though it had cool characters, it just sucked. And then when I watched the, um, the web series, I was like, this is awesome. This is like a pretty cool take on, you know, the characters. Um, and that was like in 2011, so it's been a while. And they were constantly promising, you know, like, oh, we're going to have new web, web episodes. We're going to have new this, new that, blah, blah, blah. Um... Today, I actually found out that they're going to have it in February. Sometime in February, they're going to have uh, Season 2 start. And they actually got some big names, apparently. They have um, uh, Casper Van Dien, I think his name is. The guy from Starship Troopers and Sleepy Hollow. Apparently, he's going to play Johnny Cage. Which, alright, fine. But the guy who they had as Johnny Cage in the previous uh, Legacy was pretty good. He was, he was cool. I liked him. Um, apparently, Kerry Taga Hiroki Tagawa, who played Shang Tsung in the first movie, is going to be Shang Tsung, an older Shang Tsung in this. That's awesome. Uh, Mark DeCoscos, who's just an awesome martial artist and actor, he's going to play Kung Lao. And I was like, wow, that's... I guess they got a budget. <laughs> uh, but anyway, <laughs> um, I had gotten a question from somebody, who I, I don't know who the hell they are, because uh, I don't know if they have a YouTube channel or not, but uh, it was just like a blank photo and didn't have like an actual thing it was just a question um the question was is i started watching your videos when you had the contest and you showed a uh your wolverine artwork which was really cool i've been watching your stuff ever since um do you have any other artwork with wolverine harley quinn spider-man etc and could you show it off yes i can um uh, i have boxes and boxes and boxes of portfolio stuff of artwork that I have done since I was a kid you know in high school I used to draw constantly when I wasn't paying attention in class I was drawing stuff and sketch pads and no uh, notebook paper whatever I could get my hands on um, and then I, I stopped for a lot of reasons actually uh, it was a fun hobby but I, I, I had stopped I, I did a couple things in 2010 um, just you know for the hell of it I drew a couple things for my cousin because um, he asked. Uh, sometimes I draw stuff for my friends when, when I can. But um, I'll show you a few. I, I don't remember if I've shown these already, but they were lying around, so I forget what the hell. Uh, this is Batman that I framed. Very cool. This is Batman and Batgirl. I had drawn this uh, from my fiance. I was like, there we are. I was like, yeah, right. <laughs> but, uh, here is a Harley Quinn. That I'm gonna touch up a little bit because it's actually starting to fade out. And I want to maybe frame it down the line. Um, this is one that that friends of mine and even family members are just constantly after me for because they they love it. And I'm not gonna lie, this took a really really long time to do. Um, most of the time, I can draw stuff pretty quickly. You know, a couple.
couple minutes, you know, depending on what it is, you know, something detailed, a couple hours. This this thing took forever. Um, I think it took a couple of days actually, but this is um, Spider-Man and Venom. Very detailed. Got to frame that one down the line. Uh, here's another one that took forever to make, uh, especially with the inking. Uh, apparently, everyone tells me I'm really good with ink. Um, but this is actually one of my favorites, and I actually do have to frame it down the line. This is uh, Wolverine in his brown costume in the woods from the Spider-Man comic. It's pretty much where I got the idea. Uh, I think it was like Spider-Man number 10 or something like that, where he's with uh, Wolverine. Well, Wolverine's with Spider-Man and Wendigo. But uh, yeah, that's some stuff. I mean, perhaps I'll grab a box full of stuff next time or whatever and show a few off here and there. If anybody wants to see them, um, let me know. Um, moving on to... Somewhat of a debate, I guess would be the, the, the thing. <laughs> I guess it's a debate. Um, I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. He's basically my favorite Marvel superhero. Um, Tim and Wolverine have always been tied, but you know Spider-Man's usually right above Wolverine. I've always liked Spider-Man more because I related to him more, I guess. Um, but a friend, a couple friends of mine, actually there was three of us, we were discussing it on uh, on Facebook and uh, on texting. They're like, oh, you know, because. One of my friends is just a huge Spider-Man fan, just as, almost as crazy as I am, I guess. And he's like, what do you think about what they're doing with Spider-Man? He's like, it's complete, you know, BS. And I'm like, um, if you didn't read Amazing Spider-Man number 698, and you might want to skip ahead again, but, you know, it's a good book, so you might want to go out and read it. Um, the couple ones before it I liked with the Hobgoblins, I thought they were cool. I thought it was an awesome storyline. This is another storyline that I just thought was really cool until... But when I started to really think about it, it started to piss me off. Uh, <laughs> I had done a review on this before, so, I mean, if you want to check that review, but this is going to be a little bit of a more in-depth look at it. Um, basically, in this, as you can see, Doc Ock is seeing Peter Parker, and he's just trashed. He's just shot. Um, in this book, you see Spider-Man, which was actually a really awesome-looking Spider-Man. You know, let me, let me show it to you, because if you don't have it, you definitely should pick it up. But it was one of the best drawn Spider-Men I've, I've seen in a while. I just liked it a, a hell of a lot. Um, give me one second. This. That Spider-Man is just really cool looking. You know, well colored. You know, the suit just looks like the old school suit. And actually here's a, a better shot of him. Very, very cool. Liked it a lot. Um, but anyway, if you're a Spider-Man fan like I am, and you're reading this, Spider-Man does a lot of stuff that isn't Spider-Man-like. You know, like he goes full out and beats the crap out of somebody. Um, you know, ignores some things. Just doesn't look like he just doesn't care, doesn't have a care in the world, which is, you know, Spider-Man's not whining anymore. So, Captain Cummings, I think, was the one who said it. So, there you go. Because um, uh, he was complaining that, that Spider-Man whines too much. And there you go. Um... It's very un-Spider-Man-like, and you're kind of like, what is he doing? Like, you know, what's going on? And he says, he finally snapped, or just finally said, screw it. Um, then, later on in the book, you see Captain America sends him a message saying, you have to get to the to the to this prison. You know, Doc Ock is pretty much on his way out, and we think he knows that you're Peter Parker. You know, you got to get here and talk to him. So, at the end of the thing, you see Spider-Man go to, to Doc Ock, and, and Doc Ock is just, like I said, he's just trash. Like, he's on his way out. Like, he's basically about ready to die. And he keeps saying, Peter Parker. And Spider-Man walks up and tells everybody, he's like, you know, can I be left alone? You know, can you turn the cameras off? I want to talk to him, you know, face to face, that you know, nothing. Everyone's like, yeah, no problem. Everybody leaves, cameras turn off, whatever it is, and he keeps saying Peter Parker, and Spider-Man takes off his mask and says, uh, yeah. And Doc Ock goes, no. He's like, I'm Peter Parker. And Spider-Man kind of leans in and goes, yeah, you are Peter Parker. He's like, but now you're Doc Ock. So you find out that they switched minds or whatever it is they did. So, Doc Ock's mind is in Peter Parker's body, and vice versa. Um, and the whole thing is like, you know, he's like, yeah, he's, and Spider-Man's kind of like, who's now Doc Ock's like, I'm going to do everything that you could have done but didn't do, and, you know, I'm going to be the better Spider-Man, and, you know, I love life, and blah, blah, blah. Um, interesting story. I'm, I'm looking forward to see how they're going to, what they're going to do with it. But the problem I have with it, like I said, this is, I'm, I'm a Spider-Man fan, and, and this is what kind of pissed me off. Is that in, in movies or in comics, like whenever they do like some kind of body switch or mind swap or whatever it is, uh, it doesn't last long. Like it's usually like, you know, an episode of a, of a show or it's like maybe two issues of a comic. 
This looks like it's going to go for keeps because now, if you look at Superior Spider-Man, which comes out in a month or so, whatever it is, from what it looks like, that's Doc Ock still. Now, what gets me is you look at, say, the 700 issues of Spider-Man. You could pick any one. Spider-Man gets out of some crazy stuff. You know, things you're like, wow, how the hell did he get out of there? It's like, because I'm Spider-Man. But, um, you know, he beat the Infinity Gauntlet. He takes down people that are, you know, triple his size. He just goes and, and, and wins. Um, now... And the thing that gets me is that, all right, granted, if, if they swapped, you know, bot minds or body, whatever the hell you want to call it, um, that's how you're going to take out Spider-Man? That's how you're going to destroy Peter Parker? You're going to have him switched with Doc Ock, and then they pull the plug on him, and he, he flatlines? That's how you're killing Spider-Man? Out of all the stuff that you had, this is what you do to him? I was like, oh, God. Um, yeah. I am looking forward to C-699 and 700, because like I said, it's an interesting storyline, but if that's what they're going to do, and... They're, that's how they're going to end Spider-Man. The Amazing Spider-Man is that he's killed off in Doc Ock's body. Oh, God. Um, but they did get me the Bastards because 700, I ordered um, the regular edition and a couple of different variants. Now, that's when you should do variants. At the ending of a book, the beginning of a book, you know, 50th anniversary, whatever. Um, so they did get me the Bastards because I looked at the variants. I'm like, you know what? It's the last, then, last thing of Spider-Man. Um, I like the variants. I thought they were kind of interesting and in how they intertwine. Um... You know, I talked to my fiance as a new mom. She's like, all right, you know, it's Spider-Man. Are you a fan? Get it, you know. And um, so I ordered a few variants on that one. Um, but which sucks, kind of, is because from what I'm, I'm reading, Midtown is having a huge problem with their shipping now. Of course, uh, the issues I'm supposed to get uh, that come out Wednesday that I should be getting, like, Friday or Saturday, who knows when I'm going to get them. Because they even sent me an email saying they're having huge problems with their shipping like really major delays due to the Black Friday and holiday people, you know, ordering stuff that their shipping just basically fell apart. Fantastic. So, I mean, I, I definitely, I did one hell of an advance order on 700 and, and Superior Spider-Man and stuff like that, but who knows when I'll get any of this stuff. Anyway, um, another thing that I was I was quite interested with, and uh, it's kind of funny, well, not really funny, but what the hell, um... I had shown this off before. It's basically a list of, of pretty much every Amazing Spider-Man title that I'm missing from, uh, I'm going to say th from 340 and up, because I have everything from three from 298 to 340, which a couple of them i got to double check, because I think I have 340 for 41. But that's pretty much my project now. I'm going through all my Spider-Man just to double check, make sure that everything on here is accurate, and I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not going to go to the store and say, oh, I need... Amazing Spider-Man 433, pick it up, and then come home like, crap, I have it already. So, um, yeah. Um, and me being a sick individual, I have a notepad, which I divided. Uh, one section is all the comics that I want on each particular person, like Captain America, Spider-Man, Wolverine, blah, blah, blah. Um, all the ones that I want. Then towards the end of that is the ones that I have. And then I have, um, oh, what the hell was it? Uh, just like redoing some things like, you know, how much prices on, on certain things, you know, whole, whole big mess. You know, I gotta redo it anyway, because it's just a mess. Um, my fiance was looking at she's like, what is this? I'm like, these are all the Spider-Man titles I believe I'm missing from a certain point over. And she's like, Jesus. I was like, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 a lot. Because I was telling her I really want to try to f uh, fill up my Spider-Man collection. Which is rough, because if you look at some of the ones, anything from 298 down, um, they're usually pretty damn expensive. You know, I, I know that there's no way in hell I'm going to get Amazing Spider-Man number one unless I buy a really, really destroyed copy, and uh, which would probably cost me like 500 bucks. Um, but, you know, there's certain, like I said, there's certain ones that I know there's no way in hell I'm going to wind up getting unless I win the lottery or, or something, or I find one hell of a deal. Like, uh, the one I'm, I'm trying to get that I've been wanting for a long time, but it just, again, it's just, it's one of those ones where it's extremely expensive, uh, unless I buy a really crap copy, and... It's kind of like with, with these particular ones. Like, I don't want to buy a crap copy. I want to get a good one, uh, which is Amazing Spider-Man 14. I believe it's the first appearance of the Green Goblin. Um, that one I've been looking at. And uh, I think it was Amazing Spider-Man number four, which is the first Sandman I was looking at. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe I'll get lucky and save for a couple years and say, screw it. But the other ones, like I said, from 298 up, I can kind of afford here and there, you know. Um, but one of the good things I had found, uh, I was looking through some comic book stores and I gotta, I gotta wait a, a week or two hopefully they'll still have them um, and I found you know 50 cent bin there was quite a few amazing spider-man 400s uh, a couple issues of 400 like you know 410 415 stuff like that that are on my list 
that were in the 50 cent bin. Um, I found a couple ones that were in the 500s that were 87 cents to a buck, you know, give or take. So I'm like, my only concern is that some of them are in good to very fine condition, give or take. And I'm looking at them like, oh, you know, like I'm like, ah, you know, I'm paying 50 cents for, you know, say Amazing Spider-Man 410 or whatever, you know, just an example. And the collector in me is like, nah, you should get a better copy, you know, spend a little more money. And I'm like, shut up. I want to fill my thing, you know, and, oh, well, what if it's worth money? So, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Um, but anyway, this update, point one, is long enough as it is, and I hope I answered a few questions. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, you know, throw them out there. Ask me whatever you want. I don't mind making videos. I don't mind answering, you know, replies, stuff like that. Um, I actually love doing it. It gives me something to do. <laughs> uh, it's fun. <laughs> but uh, if you have any... Uh, I'd love to see any kind of uh, uh, debates that you got. Like, you know, like we had the huge debate with the black suit for Spider-Man. I love getting into that stuff. It's fun. Um, so if you have any of those, by all means, throw them my way. I, I love that stuff. Um, check out uh, Dynamic Comic Book Duo because they have some a pretty kick-ass contests going on, which is a lot of fun. Um, they always have good stuff uh, and good videos. They make me laugh. Um, and I really, I got to i got to stop procrastinating and make my damn shout-out video and thank you video. Uh, I'm like, I'm, I'm, but I'm, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm chopping things down. Uh, I have been working on my, my intros, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to keep the intro that I've shown with the Wolverine. I'm going to keep that for my Cracker show, which I know it's very confusing because people are just watching, like, what are you talking about? This is Cracker. Um, there's Cracker and there's Cracker Crumbs, which Crumbs has always been like an update, which, you know, something that I remember to do or something that I was asked or something like that, whereas Cracker is a specific episode based on a certain thing. So I'm going to keep the intro for that, and I'm, I've been working on a new intro for Crumbs, which is my update channel. Um, I just got to tweak it a little bit more because I don't want it as long as it is. Like I got it down to about a minute, but I want to get a little less than a minute, so you know, it makes more sense. But anyway, I'm, my list is growing. It's, it's growing, but I'm checking off the bit by bit. So eventually I'll have my intros done. Eventually I will have my shout-out video where I'll thank everybody that's on my... Uh, that have subscribed to me, and, and of course, I'm, I've been uh, getting better. I'm, I'm watching, uh, I'm trying to watch as many videos as I can of everybody's. I'm, I've been slacking. You know, I've just been also busy with other stuff, so I'm like, oh, crap. I'm, you know, I go to look at one video, and there's like five others already. I'm like, but anyway, <laughs> no excuses. <laughs> anyway, if you like what you see, please hit the little like button. If you really like what you see, hit the subscribe button. And uh, as I start to love my new ending catchphrase, it's not the size of your man give the matters, it's what you have in it.